Hi, Amos Peter is my name, and uh, I would like to welcome you once again to another important lecture in our series on this uh, subject of computer architecture. And uh, in this lesson, we shall attempt to discuss about two very important uh, systems of computer architecture or computer model which are, are known as uh, the von Neumann computer architecture or model and the Harvard computer architecture or model. But before I go on further, I would like to give a recap of uh, how we defined what computer architecture is. And uh, in our first uh, introductory, inter introductory lesson, we define computer architecture as a set of rules or methods which describe the functionality, organization, and implementation of a computer system. We also gave an alternative definition where we said that the computer architecture could also be considered as a specification which details how a set of uh, software and hardware technologies interact with each other in order to implement uh, a computer system. Now, having said that, uh, by way of introduction, it so happens that in the year uh, 1944, three scientists uh, by name of uh, E. W. Burks and H. H. Goldstein and uh, John Napier, who happens to be the leader of the team, presented uh, a very historic uh, report, which was titled uh, Preliminary Discussions on the Logical Design of electronic computing instrument. And um, it so happens that this very particular report uh, became the first complete and comprehensive investigation of the design of electronic computers, uh, which was done as, at the Institute of Advanced uh, Studies. Now this report, which was referred to as the von Neumann report, as it was uh, commonly called, outline a blueprint for computer uh, design or a plan if you so wish and uh, this very particular plan or blueprint happens to become a starting point or a reference point for the design of most computers uh, built ever since now computers which follow uh, the von Neumann design scheme um, we are also called the IAS type machine uh, named after the Institute of Advanced uh, Studies or they are, can also be called the von Neumann architecture. Now this group of scientists uh, started with four broad design specifications or goals at the heart of their design. And it so happens that their aim was um, to build a computer with certain features or requirements. And um, the number one thing was that they wanted that the, the computer that was going to be built um, has to be a general purpose computer. By general purpose, um, we imply here that the computer should be capable of working on a wide variety of problems without the need for changing its internal uh, structure or circuitry. Because it so happens that uh, the previous computers uh, before the von Neumann design were actually hardwired. So once they are hardwired, they can only carry out a specific task. And uh, if you want to reprogram the computer or to perform any other tasks, 
the internal uh, circuitry or the wires will have to be reconfigured. So the von Neumann uh, report aims at building a computer that is general purpose, which could be used to tackle various types of problems. Now, the, the number two um, specification or aim was that uh, this very particular computer also needs to be an automatic uh, computer system. In other words, it has to be capable of carrying on and completing a specified uh, task without the need of uh, human intervention. In addition to that, it was also required in the specification that uh, the computer system has to be electronic in nature. In other words, um, it should be devoid of uh, um, moving parts or mechanical parts, you know, which uh, can uh, impact negatively on the reliability of the computer system. So um, it was required that the computer system has to be purely electronic in nature. And um, the next feature that was required of this von Neumann computer is that uh, the computer system also needs to be a digital computer. In other words, it means the computer needs to be based on the digital arithmetic. Um, in other words, the computer should be a system that is capable of uh, manipulating strings of zeros and ones because um, that is the native language of the computer system which is referred to as the machine language or machine code. Um, the von Neumann architecture has uh, the following uh, characteristics or features if you so desire. Now, it was required that um, the data flow and the computer system has to be linear from um, left to right. Right? And um, in other words, there is no duplex uh, movement of information. The information has to be a linear one or a sequential type of uh, movement from left uh, to right. And it was also required that this uh, particular computer must have only one memory. And um, it is in this one memory that both um, the program instruction and the data resides. In other words, the computer has no way of uh, distinguishing either the program data or the instruction uh, data. All of them have to be res resident in the computer uh, memory. The von Neumann architecture also requires that the machine must have um, only two types of buses for data to transfer. And um, that is, it should have one data bus and one address bus. And of course, the data bus is responsible for carrying the data that is to be processed. And the address bus is to be responsible for specifying the address of the location of the data in memory. Another important feature of the von Neumann architecture is that the CPU you know, has to fetch data in a two clock cycle. And a clock cycle here is usually the electronic pulse that the CPU utilizes. And it so happens that um, for every one um, clock cycle or electronic pulse, the CPU has the ability of either accessing data in memory 
or writing data in memory. So it so happened that um, this very particular computer is required to be able to, for any operation it needs to perform, it should be able to do that in the two clock cycle. And uh, just like I said earlier, that the memory, uh, that single memory that it shares, um, actually uh, stored two types of data. That is uh, the programmed data and the instruction uh, data. On this slide, it's a schematic diagram of uh, a typical von Neumann architecture. And from the diagram, you can see that there are three very important um, components here. Here we have the central processing unit, which is composed of the control unit and the arithmetic and logic unit. And the ALU is the one that is responsible for all mathematical or arithmetic calculations such as uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, floating point uh, computation, and so on and so forth. While the control unit serves as the traffic core, you know, where uh, signals that are responsible for synchronizing information flow across all the components uh, are propagated from the clock. And uh, here we have the memory unit, which stores those two very important uh, information we mentioned in the earlier slide. And then we have the input unit which feeds the CPU or the computer system with uh, the information it needs. And then we have the output unit in the form of either the monitor or the printer or some other output device. But here you could see that the arrow is actually in one direction from the input unit to the processor and of course in one direction from the uh, processor to the output device. And uh, you can see that the information flow happens to be from left to right in a sequential manner. The only part that has the ability of uh, bidirectional uh, flow of data is the interface bus between the memory unit and the CPU. And this is uh, shown by the two edged uh, arrow as seen in the diagram. Now, coming to the Harvard architecture. In the case of the Harvard architecture, it was required that um, the Harvard architecture type of computer should have this type of um, features. One is that it should have uh, two memories. And these two memories are separated from each other. And one of the memory is supposed to hold the instructions, and then the other one is supposed to store the data. In addition to that, it's also expected that the computer system should have um, four different types of buses as we shall soon see in the schematic diagram in the next slide. The next important feature is that it is required that the bosses, those four bosses, are to be duplex in their operation. In other words, they should have the ability of sending information or data uh, simultaneously. And uh, it so happens also that in the, in the Harvard architecture, a very important feature referred to as pipelining is available. And uh, that is the ability of the processor to handle concurrent execution of data at the same time, so as to minimize the idle time of the computer 
uh, processor. Now, in the Harvard architecture, one bus is connected to the program data, while the second is connected to the data uh, supporting the program. Another very important uh, key feature of the Harvard architecture is that uh, programs which are fetched in memory can be fetched only in one uh, clock cycle as opposed to the von Neumann architecture where the programs are fetched in two clock uh, cycles. So in other, in other words, the Harvard architecture can fetch the code and execute instructions in one uh, uh, clock cycle. So in this slide, it shows a schematic diagram of a typical Harvard architecture computer where we have the control uh, unit at the center. Then we have the arithmetic and logic unit. We have the IO, input output unit. We have the data memory, the instruction memory. So this is the first memory of the computer. And uh, this is the second memory of the computer. Now, what they of note is to have a look at all the four data bosses that were actually required of the Harvard architecture. And from the way and manner the arrows are drawn with bidirectional heads, uh, it shows that the Harvard architecture bosses are duplex in their mode of operation. In other words, data can be uh, written and retrieved simultaneously at the uh, same uh, time. So, so far so good. This is um, what the Harvard um, architecture and the von Neumann architecture who were, uh, was uh, actually the specification that was written out as a blueprint or a guide for the design of uh, computer uh, systems. Now on this slide is just um, a table which shows at a glance the major differences or the futures between the von Neumann architecture and the Harvard architecture. And we'll quickly run through each of their characteristics or difference. As you can see, the von Neumann, there's only one memory, whereas the Harvard has two memories. In the von Neumann, there's only one data and one address bus, while in the case of the Harvard, we have four. CPU fetches data into clock cycle, while in the case of the Harvard, um, the CPU fetches information in only one clock cycle. And of course, the buses are duplex in their operation. In other words, they are bidirectional. Data flow here is linear from, uh, from left to right. In the case of this, it's not linear, it's bidirectional. And also we have the pipelining uh, feature is available in the Harvard architecture. We have two types of memory here. And uh, here we, uh, okay, we have two types of data in the case of the von Neumann. Well, here, we have um, only one type of data. So I would like to hold on here for today, and I hope that the lesson or the lecture I have just presented here has been very, very informative, and I would like to thank you for listening, and uh, you should expect uh, subsequent videos on this very important uh, topic or course on computer architecture. I would like to thank you for.